England rugby are two for two in this year's Six Nations Championship, but there have been plenty of question marks about performance. However, Borthwick has been bolstered by several high-profile players returning from injury this week. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I'm going to be with you throughout the championship and beyond. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And today, I'm going to be looking at what I think the England team will be to go up to Murrayfield and take on Scotland this coming Saturday. Just a quick overview of how they played against Wales. It was, it was a real stodgy performance. They got into a, a, an arm wrestle and they won it. But it was a game lacking in flow, lacking in beauty. Um, but England really eked out a win. And for that, they need to uh, take credit for sure. Elko and myself did a deep dive on that game and I'll link it up there. If you haven't seen it yet, go and take a look at that and we discuss everything that happened in that game in detail. We'll start off with some squad updates. Um, well, squad, squad news, really. Some sad news last week coming out of camp that Jamie George sadly lost his mum. So deepest condolences uh, there, Jamie. Now, in terms of squad ins and outs, Alex Mitchell, who's been playing really well for England, is out with a knee injury. It seems like it might be a, a longish term one as well. So uh, so Harry Randall comes in, live wire scrum half from Bristol. It's so exciting to watch him play. Also in, some big names. Manu Tuolagi back. George Martin back. Luke Kowandiki back. And very recently as well, added to that list, Ollie Lawrence. Uh, out of the squad, you know, to make room for their go, Jamie Blamire. Um, Tom Pearson and Oscar Beard back to their clubs. Those players coming in are going to make a, a considerable difference, I, I believe. OK, let's see how that fits in to the selection for this coming weekend. As usual, we'll start with the forwards and we'll start with the players that I think are guaranteed to keep their places. Jamie George, obviously, hooker and captain playing playing very nicely and leading the team really well. Toji and Chesson both playing fantastically well in the second row. I think there's more to come from them, though. You know, I think they're playing well, you know, solidly eight out of tens, but I think they've both got more in them. Then I think Sam Underhill and Ben Earl are also both playing quite nicely, but I think there's more to come from them as well, especially Underhill. I think now he's got a few games under his belt. I expect him to really start banging people on a regular basis. The question marks I've got over Marlow and Stewart in the front row. I just question whether, I think they're playing fine. I think they're playing okay. But I just think maybe this would be a good week to swap things up and go for a bit more aggression from the start with Gange and scrummaging aggression from Cole. And then have Marla and Stuart come on towards the end where they're both probably, well, Stuart's more mobile than Cole, I would say, and a better defender. And if the game gets loose, we could probably do with that. And um, yeah, uh, and Joe Marla will definitely bring a big scrummaging edge. And he's also a very good defender as well. So I wonder whether they might swap it up this week. Time will tell. I just think it's often quite good when you've got props that are of a very similar level. I think it's good sometimes to keep some on the bench and, and, and rotate like that. It keeps people fresh and hungry and gives people um, a different way of thinking about the game, which can sometimes be beneficial. At six, I think Ethan Roots certainly had a great debut. Against Wales, like, I don't know. He just felt like maybe he looked a little a little slow, maybe. But he does get through a huge amount of work. Um, so the question mark here really is, again, what kind of game do we think it's going to be? Cunningham South has provided so much zip off the bench, real dynamism and pace. Do we want that from the start or do we want that coming on at the end? These are the probably the, the decisions. You know, it's probably going to be less on form in this case and more on balance of the back row and what you want on the pitch at which time. This is what I think. I think they're going to start with Genge. I think they're going to start with Cole. And I think Roots as well. I think Genge is carrying from the start. I think England need like a real aggressive focal point to their pack. And I think Genge can provide that for sure. And I think Roots, as I said, he's, he's just such a hard worker, but physical, carrying, tackling. I think we're going to need that from the start. And Cunningham South is, is really a fantastic, you know, bench player and still very young and experienced as well. So we need to make sure that we're not exposing him, you know, too much too early. He's doing brilliant at the, at the moment. 
Okay, moving into the backs, and there's a ton of question marks here as well. Very interestingly so. I think George Ford definitely keeps his place. He is class personified, and he drove England to that win against Wales. Slade at 13, I think, absolutely keeps his place. I think he's so key to the way England are trying to defend. I think if we move, change around the 13, I think England will probably take a few steps backwards in defence. I think he's a quality player, and I think he's really pivotal. Tommy Freeman's been excellent. Freddie Stewart was superb against Wales. So these are then the question marks. Alex Mitchell obviously is gone out for this game. Certainly, maybe uh, the rest of the championship as well. So what does that leave us? It leaves us Danny Kerr, who's been doing a fantastic job from the bench. Do you pick him? Because he's had the most experience, the most game time so far. So do you have him next cap off the rank? Or do you go with Ben Spencer, who is, I think, the best all-round nine that England have got. Like, he's equally good at kicking, running and passing, in my opinion. So that's kind of the, the question mark there. Then in the 11 and 12 jersey, Fraser Dingwall's done fine. He's had some nice moments on attacks and he's got really beautiful soft hands. Some of the things he's done haven't all come off. And he's made a lot of tackles and worked super hard on defence, but he's also been bounced off a few tackles as well. So he's missed a few. So... You've got Manu, you've got Ollie Lawrence, two people, well, Manu with the experience, certainly, and Ollie Lawrence, who was one of the form players in the Premiership before he got injured. England have struggled for real go forward in the backs. Do you bring one of those guys in? That's the question. Um, and then on the left wing, again, I think Daly, with his kick chase, with his kicking, I think he's pivotal to the way England is still trying to play in lots of phases. He was key in the Wales game, won some balls in the air that were really key. However, I think he's been very culpable on defence. I think he's had some chances in attack that maybe a quicker winger would have finished or would have stood a better chance of finishing. I think he kicked a, a very, uh, it kicked away a try scoring opportunity against Wales as well. So as I love that Elliot Daly is a player and I'd only ever pick him on the left wing. But there's a question mark. Do we go with something fresher, more dynamic, possibly more used to defending in the way England are trying to defend? Let's see. This is what I think. I think we'll go with Spencer. I think he's been England's best nine for many, many years. Uh, in, just because of his all-round game, as I said earlier, uh, I think he's outstanding. So I'll go with Spencer. And I think Danny Kerr has been doing such a good job for the bench. I think that's I think that's a role that he's so good at that it's hard to start him. Um, it really is. And as I said, Spencer will certainly not let anybody down. He's got a big game temperament, and I think he'll be the right choice. I'm going to go with Daly on the left wing, even though some of the weaknesses that I've just mentioned, I think just his overall influence is still what counts, and I still think that he's going to be valuable for England. The big choice then really was sadly. I don't think Dingwall can keep his place. I think England do need some more punch in the midfield, some better balance. So it's then a case of Tuolangi or Lawrence. And Tuolangi has proved time and time again that he can come back from injury and play at the highest level immediately. I haven't seen that from Ollie Lawrence yet. That doesn't mean that he can't do it. And even though I think he was in better form pre-injury probably than Tuolangi was, Again, I think this is the right choice for this fixture. Tuolagi still has a certain amount of fear factor around him. He still has that certain amount of presence. And I think that midfield combination, which has had a lot of time together for Tuolagi and Slade, is the one to go for in this instance. Tough. It's tough on several other people, but that's what happens when you've got a lot of good players. Moving on to the bench, and I think it, I think Theo Dan's done so well from the bench that Luke Karandicki is going to have to wait his time and fight his way back to fitness and form before he'll get a chance again. Marlow and Stewart swapping places, as I mentioned. And then this was actually something that could have been discussed in terms of the starting team. George Martin, the big banger coming back. I think they've got the balance right at the moment. I think it's a good, good sign. And I think having Martin to come on from the bench to add that real sort of punch and aggression from the bench will be a good, good thing, especially first game back. I can see him playing well and then getting into the starting team for the following week. But I think having him from the bench is the right way to go. Tough on Alex Coles. He's done nothing wrong. I just think George Martin's a better player. Just the way it is. 
and then the rest of the bench exactly the same because they've all done well when they come off the bench. They've done a brilliant job, and especially with the youngsters there, again, I think there's a real need to protect these players, give them experience, get them game time, get their number of caps up before we start picking them from the start. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think the team will be. And what do I want to see from this England team? I, most of all, I want to see them continue to be really brave with their defence. I want to see them back themselves, even though they know there will be errors, even though they know it will end in some line breaks. But hopefully the number of turnovers and great defensive plays will outweigh that over the course of the match. And here at here first, I'm going to predict there's going to be an intercept try this week for England. We'll wait and see. But what do you think? Do you think this is the right team? Do you think this is the team that Borthwick's going to pick? And do you think they're good enough to turn around recent form and win against Scotland? Let me know in the comments down below and I will join you there for a good old chinwag. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind and you can subscribe there, you can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.